and half the time getting into a state of... <laughs> you know what I mean. She must have made it up. Oh, read it and ask yourself whether anyone could have made it up. Evie's too much of a lady. She couldn't do a thing like that. Let's go. Well, aren't you going to finish your drink? Oh, I, don't, I don't want it, thanks. I, I'm sorry, Daphne. I must get away. See you now, sir. Hmm? Mr. Blaine will see you now. Oh, thanks, Harry. Uh, hello, George. Hi, Harry. I brought you here. Had a good time in London? Yes, thanks. Uh, I'm taking my missus up for a few days next week. How's Evie? It's Evie I've come to see you about. Have you read her book? Yes. A great success, isn't it? Fancy Evie breaking out into poetry. Wonders will never cease. Which made me look a perfect fool. Nonsense. There's no harm in writing a book. Isn't there? When it's her own story. Who says it is? You know perfectly well that it is. And so does everyone else. I... I suppose that I'm the only one who doesn't know who her lover was. I wouldn't jump to conclusions. There's nothing to say she didn't make up the whole thing. I suppose she'd written a story about a murder. Would that make her a murderess? Look here, Harry. Be honest with me. Can you look me in the eye and tell me that you believe it's a made-up story? You've no right to ask me a thing like that, George. Ask Evie. I don't. Why not? I'm afraid she'd tell me the truth. Harry. Yeah? Who was the chap? I don't know. Well, if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Oh, I've got to know. I've got to. Look here, you have private detectives you employ, I suppose. It isn't a pretty thing to put detectives onto one's own wife. Well, it isn't a pretty thing for her to carry on an affair behind my back, is it? In any case, the man's dead. Well, how can I be sure of that? That may be the only untruthful part in the whole book. I've got to know, Harry. You must help me. I won't do it, George. Besides, if Evie found out you've been putting detectives onto her, she'd probably leave you. You want that? Well, no. Why should I? She runs the house perfectly. We never have any servant trouble. She's done wonders with the garden. And she's splendid with the village people. But how can I go on living with her when she's been so grossly unfaithful to me? You don't know that for certain. Then why on earth did she write the wretched book? Well, I suppose she had some very pointed experience and it was a relief to get it off her chest. Then why didn't she have the sense to write it under an assumed name? She used her maiden name. I expect she thought that'd be enough. And it would have been if the book hadn't had this amazing vogue. 
What am I going to do, Harry? What would you do? Nothing. Nothing? But I can't overlook a thing like that. I've been made a laughing stock. Nonsense, old boy. Now listen. The man's dead. It all happened a long time ago. Forget it. Talk to people about Evie's book. Rave about it. Let them know how proud you are of her. The world moves quickly and people's memories are short. They'll soon forget. I shan't forget. Yes, you will. No, I shan't forget as long as I live. Well, I suppose you're right. It's no good crying over spilt milk. I'll take your advice. You know, the truth is, I don't know what I'd do without Evie. But there's one thing I shall never understand to my dying day. What in the name of heaven did the fellow ever see in her? I'm sorry you're angry about the book, George. If I'd known what would happen, I'd never have published it. What difference could that have made? Well, it would have saved you from being annoyed. Annoyed? <laughs> when a man learns that his wife has been unfaithful to him, but when she publishes to the whole world that she's carried on a degrading love affair behind his back, you expect him to be no more than annoyed. But, George... Evie, in 30 years of married life, we've never sunk to vulgar quarrelling. When this thing happened, I was stunned, amazed. These last few days, I've lived in a state of horror. And utter shame. Today, I decided that silence was the only decent and possible cause for me. But now that you've spoken, I shall speak. I'm entitled to ask one question and to receive a truthful answer. Who was this man and is he really dead? Because if... Who was he? For heaven's sake, tell me and I've done with it. It was you. Me? Yes. Don't insult me with lies. It was you. As you were. All those years ago in those happy days when we first met and you loved me. But you said in this book that he died. He did. The man who loved me died. It was my fault, George. I didn't understand all the things he was fond of. Farming, hunting, shooting. I couldn't give him the children that he wanted more than anything else in the world. I failed. And as time went by, I only had the memory of those few short years when I was happy. And I knew that if those memories died, everything was dead. And so I... I just wrote them down, just as I felt them, that I might always have them. But you describe him as a young man and yourself as old. I was old. But the man who loved me was young. Memories are always young. Are you telling me the truth? Do you believe I am? Now you've seen all these stories, I shall be happy if they have given you as much pleasure to see as they gave me to write. To start, I told you that I had used in my writings pretty well everything that has happened to me in the course of my life. It has been a long one and a varied one. I think I've learnt a little something about human nature, and I've tried to tell what I knew to others as honestly and as truthfully as I could. You, the public, have been very kind to me, but sooner or later we must part. I hope we shall part good friends.